to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Ebro in the morning. It's all right, Obasi, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Laura Styles, Rosenberg. Give it up for Miss Audrey Jackson. Morning. Good morning, morning. Uh, the mother of Pop Smoke. And Obasi. <laughs> know what it is. Yeah. How you doing, sir? Good to see you. Feeling good, Thanks man. for coming with mom today. Thankful to be here. Yeah, man. Uh, Miss Jackson, how Sir. are you? Uh, you have an amazing event uh, for moms, yes. um, and I would love for you to tell us about it because uh, you are a mom that our whole community has rallied around um, after the passing of your son, the murder of your son, mm -hmm. and now you're just making sure that not only do you take a step in helping other moms, but I'm sure in some way working on yourself. Yeah, this is how I take care of me. I overdo. <laughs> um, yes, mothers. Um, April is my birthday month. Okay, happy birthday. So thank you. And so I decided that in my birthday month, I would do women's health, women's self-care. And when I first started it, the, my intention was to be able to take women away to retreat. Mm. And so this year, we're really able to do it. And uh, we're going to Glen Cove Mansion. Um we're just a beautiful place. It Long is. Island, what's going on? Yes. A friend of mine just uh, had a like a 50th birthday celebration over it's, there, too. It's a place. Yeah. It's, a cool, it's a cool place. Yes, it is very yeah. nice. So to be outside and just kind of do some things on the grounds and things like that, we're not trying to trauma bond. Tell, tell me how do you what, draw the line? Yeah, how yeah. do you draw the line between trauma bonding and having a therapeutic time together? So trauma bonding for me is that the weekend's going to be all about what happened. Ah. I am really intentional and I don't want to hear nobody's story. Mm. What I want you to do, though, is talk about the love and the light that's left with you. Mm. What you're going to do with that? Mm. And is, is that when you say those words, the love and the light that is left with you, you're, you're intentional about focusing on you still being here with your loved ones and how you're going to continue to have love and positive vibrations. But also maintain the energy of the one who's not physically in this space anymore, mm -hmm. right? So my thought is if for every life that's been taken, yearly there's a remembrance of some form, however the family chooses to do that, that would change the culture of the environments that our young men are in, mm -hmm. right? This, the young brothers who are doing this kind of stuff. It would change the culture. Yeah. It wouldn't make them think twice, right? Um, we find ourselves in this place, and society says, get over it. Mm. You know, <laughs> that's how you feel, society. Yeah, society says, get over it, okay? Um, you know, some jobs give you what, three days? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, you right, know, right. when you come back, right. you're supposed to be grievance good time. To go, your grievance time. Right? But that doesn't. That's not real. That's not real. It doesn't, it doesn't help you. I, was, I met with a mom yesterday. She didn't. She was apprehensive about going because she wouldn't know anyone. So I said, if I took you out to dinner, we just kind of made friends. Would you be okay with that? She said, so we did that. So she's coming now, right? Um, but it's about getting to know each other. I lost tra my track for, there for a second. Um, and pulling it all together, right? So... And it being okay. Here I am. I'm back. And it being okay. And it being okay to sit in the space where you miss the person. You're sad. You're, you know, you just tore up from the floor up. Because that's going to happen. That's what people tell me all the time. And to me, it's it's sad because if three years in, I can have a day one experience, that ain't good. Right. So how do I manage that? Right? And you and, do have experiences like that? Well, I had one about two weeks ago. Just hit you. <laughs> just just like the night, like I was in California and I had just seen his body. Mm. It was that. Mm. You know. And, 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 and I guess my first question is, in the place you are today, where you're reaching out and asking other mothers who have lost loved ones to gun violence to join you at this mansion, who... Did you know, did you just know that this was something that you needed to do? Did, had you seen this, other people do this before? Did Have you been going to therapy and like working through these tools and the and, and kind of like, how, how did you become so equipped I is my question. I've always been in a therapeutic environment. Okay. It was a black women's coalition. I've always been in 
places where you had to know you and go deep and figure out why you're doing who you are and how you interact with others. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've, I've run groups for women. I was a teacher. Got it. I don't know, should I say I am a teacher? Um, so I just kind of knew it would help to be taken away and to not have to focus on it, right? To do something with what you're feeling, with all this stuff that's inside of you. Um, everybody say, yeah, because, you know, your son was famous, and of course you got a foundation. It's not about that. I think culturally we have lost those moments where we remember, right? Um, our Latino people, we, in, in May, right. and people make a big deal of it being a negative thing. No, that's a day to remember your ancestors. That's right. Right. And you're, you're talking about a uh, Dia de los Muertos. Right, right. Yeah, I yeah. would say it wrong. That's why I didn't say it. Yeah, yeah. Where, where that, you know, where it's, it's, there's a, yeah, it is about ancestral yeah. remembrance right. and, and acknowledgement right. of those who have passed on. And we've been taught in this culture that somehow that's wrong and that's evil or, and you're not letting go. You're not supposed to let go. You're not supposed to live in a pit, but you're not they don't, they're not gone. They still influence your life. They still shape you. The energy is there. Right. It's that place where you remember, right? In, in, in the Bible, it's the 12 stones that each uh, Hebrew family was supposed to, the, to pick up and put it in one place. Why? So that when somebody passes by, they can ask a question about the pile of stones. Right. And so we want to bury it and not have somebody ask about Bashar and not have somebody ask about Grandpa. That doesn't make sense. Right. Right. And 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 I guess I, I you say in this culture, do you mean American? Do you mean capitalism? Like when you is because there's a lot of what happens in the United States that's inherited behaviors from Europe, right? But you still see uh indigenous families, right. right? When you speak of Dia de los Muertos, which is that's an indigenous celebration, you see uh African families remembering elders and, and these sort of things. What um may I ask where your family's from before? Jamaica, Jamaica. Indies. Yes, sir. And so, did you notice a cultural shift in your family just coming to the United States? Is there a cultural change? Is there something that happens to families as they chase this American dream? Absolutely. Absolutely. As a teacher, you recognize it. Mm. In the first year, they're still very much from their country. In that second year, they're Americanized. And, and what does that mean? What they're they're less that? respectful. Okay. They're less respectful. They're less... Um, diligent about doing their work, right? Um, that, that just kind of, they, they kind of blend into that the accepted, I ain't got Behavior. A, yeah, and I don't have to, and you can't make me. And that and that's kind of an American, really a white American phenomenon, right? Yeah, this yeah. whole kind of like, you know, uh, I don't even know what to call it. What, what do they call it? Um, soft parenting where kids act out and nobody says anything and there's no like stern disciplinary yeah. guidelines because- well, Raised in a black household, like my household, you was there was repercussions. Right, but you see, we, we also want to beat the children up. <laughs> well, not necessarily even beatings. It was just like yeah, people were understood. on you on a regular right, basis, right. whether it was verbal, whether it was some sort of, right. you did X, right. Right. Y is going to happen, exactly. and the family, the community, the church right. is going to do something. And I'm, at, and I'm just asking you as a mom. It's the ownership. It's the ownership of, of, of your behavior. Right, it's what's expected of you. The whole concept of a village is—it may sound uh, corny or trite, but it's real. That everybody in your life, on a regular basis, has an expectation of you and has the same expectation of you. So if you're over here with me and you're off the mark, I'm gonna remind you. Mm -hmm. But if some they're over there with you and they're off the mark. There's a reminder Somebody over there as something. well. It's not like I'm not going to do anything about that. That's not mine. And you guys um, from Brooklyn in the, in the community that you live in and, and are from, did you feel like before, like when Pop was getting into things in the street, was the were you on him? Was the community on him? Were people talking to you about that and you trying to reel him back in? Was that a conversation that was happening? My church family was a thing. You hear me? <laughs> yeah. That was real. And it wasn't, we're not talking about Holy Ghost role. We're talking about people who live and work in the community being who they are, but also being on call. That if 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 the noise in my house wasn't making your hair go ding, if dad had said it, mom had said it, and then the, 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 
there was always an elder I could call, a, a woman I could call. There was always someone I could call who could speak to. Or take them off your hand for a minute. Because sometimes it's just y'all need to just have some space away from each other. Mm-hmm. Right? So I had that where I could just, just someone would just say, bring them. And I'll bring them back when I'm ready to bring them back to you. Not when you say okay, but when I think they're ready to come back and be who they're supposed to be. That's real. And so one of the things I want to do with the Foundation Shoot for the Stars is to help people create that community. And because that little phone that we have in our hand hooks us into the entire world, we have to figure out how to make the world smaller for our kids. Right. We really have to make the world smaller. So it's being intentional about when you come outside in the morning and you see the same faces going to the subway, give them a nod. Give them, a, give them some sort of acknowledgement because those are the people that if something goes down... Connect with your neighbors. Okay. You, you know, you want somebody to be able to say, no, you can't do that. He lives over there. Right. Somebody go over there, knock on the door, then yell up the stairs, something, because he's out here. And Obasi, Obasi, your experience, right, being in close proximity and and just this is your family. Yeah. Look, t- we talk, I talk about this on the air all the time, teenage mischief, right? And mm-hmm. so whether it's in... You know, in a in an urban neighborhood, and by urban I mean city, not yeah. black, mm-hmm. right? Inner city neighborhood, uh, in a suburban neighborhood, the mischief is different, mm-hmm. yeah. right? It, and but it's all mischief. It's right. all right. kids trying to act tough, right. grouping up with one another. We got a problem with the other high school, you know, fights, right. ah, whatever, whatever. When you live in the city, though, that escalates yeah. to gunplay, yeah. right? Gangs and these other things. Mm-hmm. In your experience, knowing who your mom, knowing the church, knowing all of that, you felt like they was on, they're on y- y'all's head enough? Like, what could they do as parents, as the church, you know, to make sure that young people that you was coming up with or even younger than you stay away from these things, if at all, anything? You know what? Um, I'm a little different. Um, I, I was actually one of them kids who kind of listened, just kind of, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So um, I had elders who told me I had a mom who cared, a dad who cared. I had food on my table. I didn't have to be in no gang, you know what I'm saying? And I was out in the streets. I was doing dumb stuff. You know, I, I, you know, I play a part in my brothers, you know, uh, joining that, you know, going into the street. But I always told them, like, what my elders used to tell me from the church, like, yo, we don't need that. We got a mom. We got a dad. We got family around us. People we got who, love. Yeah, love. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I just think that it's, you know... Um, it's a growing experience, you know. It's a learning experience. You have to uh, learn the language to communicate with others, and that's why it's the you have to build that community so you can understand and know what's going on with each other, so that you can find a solution for a better day. Do, do you guys find that um, your brother and your son's music, Pop Smoke's music, being so pervasive still, is helpful for you on a day to day basis, or is it does it make life harder for you? I don't listen to it. I'm still in. Having been able to find a therapist, because finding one was hard for a season, um, and she explained to me denial, and in my head denial was no, nothing happened. He's you know, he's coming back. He's just on concert, and she said denial is not being able to listen to his music. She said denial is not cleaning the bathroom that he used. You know, denial is leaving the world the way it was when he left. And I am the queen of denial. So you're still there. Yes, sir, and I'm enjoying it. Thank you. And will you much. turn the radio station if you if you hear him Absolutely. on the radio? Okay, so I don't know if I can say other. Yes. Um, when I, when it first happened in the beginning, I listened to news radio, and then I was able to kind of move into BGO, which is yeah, you know, jazz, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I kind of slid into contemporary Christian, and even that got a little bit much. So I couldn't even do music. Oh yeah. For a while, so it was because. That's what we All do. of it sends yeah. you to a yeah. different place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what about you, Vasi? Are you able to listen to his music? Man, I ain't going to lie to you. Um, it's a little 50-50 for me. It's half and half. Um, and it's that way because when I do hear the music, it's like, they, okay, people are still streaming. People are still listening. It's still relevant. You know what I'm saying? He's still loved by the masses. But then also it's like, damn, I'll never have my brother here to hear him say those things in the flesh again. So it's okay. like bittersweet. You know what I mean? Uh, Abasi, I want to ask you a question too. What up? Um because we, we are still living, and this has been since I was young. Yeah. So this isn't even a new phenomenon, right? Um, I was fortunate enough to have people around me that I didn't have to perpetuate a life, a life that I wasn't, like I never had to act tough, right? I knew I could fight and 
It's good enough. I have friends that was involved in gangs and gunplay and drugs and family members, all that. But it was very much like, yo, not you, for me, towards me, right? right. And, the, and the world I came from was very much that. Um, I just want to hear you talk because you are from that area, right? You've been outside in these areas. And I'm an old guy. I'm damn near 50 years old, so I ain't <laughs> been outside really moving around a long time. But I'm assuming it's similar. Where as a, as a young male, black male, there's a point in your life where you go, yo, I got to flip a switch. Excuse my language, mom. Or these motherfuckers is going to play with me the wrong way. Yeah. It's not necessarily who you want to be, but some, the, the, the energy outside, if I'm going to move to and from the train, to and from school, wherever, I got to make sure that my affiliations and my associations keep me from being played with or harmed. Right. Is that... Similar to, like, when you think back on when you was outside and moving around, is that similar? Was it that? Or was it you just wanted to be cool and hang out with the cool crowd? Man, it was a little bit of both. Like I'm saying, it's like, um, thinking about it now, it's like just being young. Just being young and dumb and wanting to have fun with your friends. Like, part of me was chilling with, you know, my mom was at a school, Maxwell High School in East New York. So I knew some people from there and, and just being there. She never even wanted me in that school, to be to be honest. She didn't want me to go to their parties or nothing, but I, I ain't listen. So I would right. go and I would chill with my friends, knowing that it wasn't going to do me no good. And I ended up joining stuff and doing stuff that, you know, like, listen, that young kids do when they're right. teenagers, you know what I'm saying, in the hood or in the urban community. But um, And then one thing leads to another, and now you're in the... In the, right. in the in the loop, you know what I'm right. saying? But luckily for me, God was on my side and somebody gave me an out. You know what I'm saying? I could have still been in the streets doing dumb stuff for no reason. But God gave me an out because, like I said, there were people around me who told me better. Like you said, I had love. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it's about right now, the revolution for love. That's what I'm big on. The revolution for love. And, and did you, do you, as a mom, church mom, because... There's a lot of praying and going on. With mm. My dad, my grandmother was praying, 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 praying. Knees bleeding, praying. But it didn't stop him from being a three-time felon. And, you know, it didn't stop my another cousin of mine, Rudolph, from being one of America's biggest drug kingpins. But the whole family was in church praying, praying, praying. Right? Are you aware of what is waiting for the kids? Are you in touch with just how much, how pervasive the traps are? One of the things I learned from Shaw, and I always, when I tell this, I wish I could remember what I was saying to him. I can see him now. He was going up the stairs, and I said something to him, which in my mind he should have known. And he said to me, you never taught that. Mm. And then I realized when I was growing up, the rules in my house and the rules outside my house were pretty much the same. Right? When he, in his and theirs and the coming generation, there's a set of rules in the house. There's a set of rules outside of the house. And there's another set of rules when you reach the school. Yeah. Mm. And you have to choose which one of those three you want to operate up and into and out of. Right? That's crazy stuff. So every so we have to be intentional about knowing that our kids are like really in some messed up stuff. And it's not when I was a kid, da, da, da. okay, but it's not your season, right? You did your stuff in your way. They're doing their stuff in their way. You know, teenagers are supposed to, you know, move away from you and try to find their own identity. And, you know, it's supposed to be their season to figure out who they are. And a lot of the kids, for whatever reason, they don't recognize that, they don't understand that, and we're losing our, we're losing them in that season when they're supposed to grow out of it. Right. I said, oh, Bossy, sadly, you know, just like, so this is the season when he and his brother and his cousins are supposed to be laughing at the stupid stuff they did. Mm. He's not here to laugh at it, right? right? Um, even the foolishness that he, even that's, this is the season to laugh into a man. I was, that was really some, I should have known better than that. So so now I ask you. Yes, sir. Is the American dream being in the United States, being in this society as we know it right now, because gun violence, Louisville, I mean, every day it's right. a different thing, right? Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? But it's everywhere, though, isn't it? I, I, I there's don't, not, there's I don't live everywhere. Here. There's guns here, but they're knives in the UK. Got it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a part of life, unfortunately, and you try to keep your kids as close to, away from certain things as you can. Um, I think part of my problem was, and it may not have been a problem, I'm just saying that now, is because I didn't want my children to think they were better than anybody. So I allowed them exposure, right? 
and I don't know that, that I did anything wrong. It just happened. Right. Right. So, um, you know, the exposure, they can, you know, drums, piano, guitar, blah, 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 and the other one, dance, drums, blah, 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 and gang. Boom. Um, Miss Jackson, is it is, is it too late if people want to come to Glen Cove Mansion next week for this this time around? Is, it is not too late. So, oh, so how would they do? Um, April twenty first, twenty two, and twenty three. Okay. Shootforthestars dot org or support at shootforthestars dot org and just let us know your name, a contact information, and we'll take care of the rest. We're um, providing scholarships for some women, so um, don't think that if you don't have the money, you can't come. Reach out. Okay. Right? And there's also a bus leaving from Brooklyn. So don't think that you got to figure out how to get to Long Island on your own. Mm. So we, we got Beautiful. you. Got I love you. this. And and every year we can help get the word out about this and remind people. And you can alert us that every April this is going to be something that's going on. Or Absolutely. Is this just... I appreciate it. Thank you for that. Yeah. But, I, you, you know, because obviously this is... It's... This is the first year we're doing it big right. like this. When we did it the other years, it was kind of small and it was in Brooklyn and I just yeah. tried to make something happen three different days. But now it is looking the way I want it to be. I'm taking the women outside of the city into the country, three days of relaxation, of, of, of you know, in looking inside and then being able to figure out how you're going to, again, sustain the light that's left with mm. you. Beautiful. Also, I just want to just um, add on to what we were talking about, just the kids in the community. Three days out of the week, right. uh, Shoot for Stars Foundation, we are, uh, we have a, a subgroup called Tell the Vision. Tell is, the that, vision. is that how I say a subgroup? Mm -hmm. So um, we work with kids that are in our community, Bayview Recreational Center in Canarsie. Uh, three days out of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're teaching them dance, acting, and songwriting. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm getting into the film through my production company. Um, I'm trying to get into that and teach them that as well. But um, we are dealing with kids and giving them a healthy alternative, a positive alternative. So if there are any kids that do want to get involved we are open to having you come just tell your and parents and how do they get the same way yeah same, same way. way same shoot tap for the stars in, tap in, tap support at shoot for the stars .org. and if y'all need anything if you need anything you just let us know thank you i appreciate that I'm it's like leader. always been so <laughs> let me know. hey i'll give you my number i'm here bro i'm here uh so much love to you guys thank you for sharing today thank you guys thank you, thank you very much, much. Appreciate it. So much. give it up one time thank you Woo!